The Suns are about to get swept. Tyrese Halliburton is hitting overtime game winners and Russell Westbrook is getting ejected and so much other stuff happening in the NBA right now. Let's talk about it. There is no other place to start right now than with the Phoenix Suns. They are now down 3 0 in their first round series against the Minnesota Timberwolves in a game that just had absolutely no urgency from Phoenix. They were fine in the first half, third quarter, they completely fell apart, and they are looking directly at a first round playoff exit for a team that is as invested in their roster as any team in the entire league in terms of future first round picks in terms of payroll they're paying 150 million dollars next season for kd devon booker and bradley beal combined and they might not win a single playoff game which by the way is not lost on Bradley Beal, he pointed out in the post-game press conference that uh, he's never been swept before, and so he doesn't think that it will happen this time either. Uh, I've never been swept a day in my life. Uh, I've never been swept a day in my life. Which, he's not wrong on the surface. Like, sure, it sounds kind of impressive. Never been swept in the playoffs. It's hard to get swept in the playoffs when you're never actually in the playoffs. You won one playoff game since 2018. So, like, not technically wrong, but kind of a weird flex. And the way the series has gone has been pretty shocking for a lot of people because going into the series, it was basically seen as even. If you looked at some of the betting markets, if you looked at how the series was, was matched up from an analysis standpoint, a lot of people thought that this was basically an even series and that Phoenix had a fantastic chance to advance to the second round. Cat was kind Coming into the series having just returned from injury minnesota obviously doesn't have a ton of playoff success over the last couple of seasons despite being one of the best teams in the conference all year long this was seen as like a toss-up series and now it's probably going to be a sweep and assuming as i am that at some point this series is going to end with minnesota winning it where on earth do you go from here if you are the phoenix suns i mean you've invested all of this stuff into the team you tried to continue to add at the trade deadline and the offseason of course adding bradley beal after getting kevin durant the prior offseason where do you go from here you can tell in his eyes he's on a mission and he wants a ring expect the suns to go through with you a huge shift this offseason i'm all for it goodbye james jones goodbye frank vogel goodbye beal uh, first of all, Bradley Beal still has a no trade clause, and I don't think anybody is going to be very excited about trying to get Bradley Beal. I don't think Frank Vogel is the big issue here. And yeah, I mean, I guess you could talk about the front office of James Jones. James Jones didn't want to do the Kevin Durant trade. They had the opportunity to do it. They had the opportunity to put Mikhail Bridges in the deal and add Kevin Durant before Ishbia bought the team. And he was like, nah, I don't want to do that. Then Ishbia buys the team, and all of a sudden, they're adding Kevin Durant, they're adding Bradley Beal, they're spending all this money, they're investing all these future first round picks and yeah it's easy to say now that that was a terrible decision but I don't think that's fair to necessarily say that it was James Jones's fault when he didn't want to do the deal until Ishbia showed up and this is a really unique situation because there is no out for Phoenix like we can't just say oh well what's going to happen in the Suns offseason there is no offseason they have to just bring the team back like they have guys under contract they just signed Grayson Allen to an extension they'll probably try and bring back Royce O'Neal as well and just hope that it goes better next year. Like, yes, they could change the coach. They could change some things in the front office. But in terms of the main pieces of the roster, they are going to be the same unless they completely tear everything down and trade away Durant and try and trade away Beal, although nobody's going to want him. This is the roster still. Like, it's kind of crazy to think about things have gone as poorly as they have. And there just are no outs for them. And this is something that we talked about before the postseason. The Western Conference is so unbelievably stacked that there were going to be teams, multiple teams, that felt like they had a chance to make the conference finals that weren't even going to make it out of the first round. Those teams right now look like Phoenix, the Lakers, and possibly the Clippers, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. This was inevitable for one of these teams, and it turns out that in this case, it's going to be Phoenix. And when asked after the game why his scoring numbers were so low in the series, Devin Booker had this to say. Done to take you out of it scoring-wise? Um, they pressure everywhere and you know, funnel you into go Burt, go Burt, go Burt. I don't know why, but other NBA players' insistency on calling Rudy Gobert go Burt just, it kills me every time. Go Burt, go Burt, go Burt. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, vibes are at an all-time high. Go Burt talking in the press conference after the game about how much Anthony Edwards' game has grown. Be ready to see what's happening on the floor, uh, you know, and, and his ability to pick the defense apart regardless of the coverage you know last year and early this year they were putting two two guys on him and he, he didn't really like that and I feel like over the course of the year he started to 
realize and embrace the fact that when they put two on you, is <laughs> this is the highest form of respect. And by the way, like certain parts of the team haven't even played particularly well in this series. Like Cat continues to get in foul trouble every single game, something we're going to have to monitor the rest of the postseason. Uh, there have been individual quarters where they haven't scored particularly well. Ant's been awesome in two of the three games, but in one of them, from a scoring perspective, he wasn't very good. There's still a lot of room for growth for Minnesota moving forward into the postseason, which is especially scary, not only for the rest of the conference, but for Phoenix as well, considering they're probably about to get swept. I like it, but your head, too, T.O., big. Needs to be smaller in the corner. Speaking of teams possibly disappointing in the first round, we got to talk about Indiana-Milwaukee Game 3. The Pacers end up winning the game in double overtime. This game was out of control, and there's so much stuff to talk about here. First and foremost, Milwaukee continues to just have terrible injury luck. Uh, they have the Giannis injury coming into the series. Dame got hurt like three different times in this game, and of course, Doc Rivers immediately after the game comes out and tells everybody, hey, Dame is really, really hurt. As if he couldn't have just like kind of, I don't know, kept that to himself and just said like, yeah, we're evaluating his injury. No, he's literally just telling everybody that Dame was a decoy in game three. Doc, you have more games to play. If you tell everybody that Damian Lillard is a decoy, maybe they're just not going to guard Dame next game. Maybe we should, you know, maybe keep that to ourselves next time doc okay but with the injury stuff aside we have to talk about the end of this game chris middleton hits not one but two game tying threes how are we not fouling up three if we're indiana in either of these situations like the only way that this game goes to overtime or double overtime is if chris middleton makes these miracle threes at the end of the game he has his back turned in multiple scenarios within these final possessions where you can just foul him they've been out rebounding milwaukee all game and you can't lose as long as you get the rebound on the free throws i understand that it's scary at certain points you don't want to foul a guy while he's trying to shoot but especially on the second one when chris middleton has already made one and huge shout out to chris middleton by the way because in the last game it looked like he was hurt he hurt his ankle he was like questionable for this game and he was the only reason that milwaukee had a chance in this like dame had his moments especially you know at certain points in terms of i think he hit three straight threes at one point in the second half but indiana got off to this crazy start and then ever since then milwaukee just continued to chip away and a lot of it had to do with how well chris middleton was playing and then Bobby Portis in the second half as well and somehow we still haven't gotten to one of the craziest parts of the game and that is the very very end so we've got the Tyrese Halliburton game winner fantastic play I love the fact that Pat Bev thinks that he didn't foul him here like if if Halliburton had missed this shot I can promise you Pat Bev would have been doing one of these and telling them to review it as if he didn't smack Tyrese Halliburton in the back of the head but before that the the Pacers had a minute and 19 second long offensive possession because the Bucks just could not get a defensive rebound like I, I I actually think the Pacers just got another offensive rebound right now as I'm recording this it was out of control Nemhard was everywhere they were saving the ball from going out of bounds over a fifth of the overtime period consisted of one Indiana offensive possession and then ultimately of course it leads to the Tyrese Halliburton game winner and moving forward on the series this is a very scary place for Milwaukee to be because Tyrese Halliburton started to get more of his confidence he was scoring really well something we talked about in some of these other games where like he has to be more aggressive in terms of looking for his shot he was doing that in this game he was fantastic in this game that's terrifying for Milwaukee uh, we know that Middleton wasn't healthy coming into the game now you've got Dame dealing with an injury as well in a game that you're going to be playing at Indiana with an opportunity to go down opportunity with a chance that you're going to go down 3-1 in the series this is a really terrifying uh, prospect right now for Milwaukee now let's talk about Dallas and the Clippers in one of the weirdest series that we've had so far in the first round Dallas wins game three they're up 2-1 this game was kind of competitive but never really in question and a big reason for that is because Paul George and Kawhi just like did not show up at all. I mean, even in their series stats, of course, Kawhi has been dealing with an injury issue. He's always dealing with injury issues, but Paul George was in foul trouble. He can't get anything going scoring wise in the series. Um, and, you know, Kyrie was fine for most of the game, then really good late in the game. Luca was fine for most of the game, but not very efficient. Like it's kind of similar to what we talked about with Minnesota, where Dallas is playing well in the series, but there's stuff that they could do even better and the Clippers are just in a terrible situation right now with, with Kawhi's health. They're clearly doing, uh, you know, some minutes restriction stuff with him. And it's just one of those things where 
they just have to play better. Like, their stars need to play better. They have complimentary guys, Zubats, Norman Powell, and then, of course, James Harden. These guys are playing well, um, but Kawhi clearly isn't healthy. This continues to happen, continues to be an issue, um, and I, I don't know what in the world is happening with Paul George. And then late in the game, a little bit of a, of a scuffle. I'm, at least as of recording this video, anticipating we might not see Russell Westbrook in game four of this series because he was shoving a ref he got ejected because he got a second technical foul uh pj washington got ejected as well <laughs> some of the funnier moments uh from this series happening as a result of, as a result of this altercation as well might not be the worst thing in the world if russ isn't there for game four for the clippers because the Mavs are not guarding him and he's not making shots like he brings an energy and an effort that i think the clippers really like but maybe take game four off Russ. maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for the clippers if he took game four off and one of the things that became clear in this game is that the the athleticism that was added at the trade deadline for the mavs is making a huge difference especially in this series they have so many options in the front court so many guys that are you know lob threats bj washington was really good for them they're guarding well as well this clippers team i still think is really talented and i, I don't think the series is over at all but it's kind of similar to how milwaukee is going into game four like you have to win that game on the road because if the series goes 3-1 you are in an extremely dangerous spot moving forward in the series. Sporting Logically is an eight minute video merchant. Really? Actually, I have no idea how much time there is in this video. I'm just recording it. So I have no idea if I actually went way over eight minutes or not. I hope so. And that's everything that happened in the NBA yesterday.